latest high TV news in the Tung Tees region with Ian Pearn and Amy Lee. ITV News, Time Tees. These are tonight's main stories. The Prime Minister promoting the government's childcare scheme in the region with new provision for two-year-olds. They say it's 15 hours a week. Um, yes, it is 15 hours a week, but that's term time. That's actually only 38 weeks a year. That's not 51 weeks a year that actually families need. It's total support that is worth around £7,000 for working families. So it's really significant, and it's a part of making sure the parents have that choice about how best to juggle childcare and their careers. And we'll hear more from the Prime Minister as he discusses a range of issues with our political correspondent, Tom Sheldrick. Also tonight, would a new tax on vaping put young people off from starting the habit? And a nightmare for Sunderland, but a happy Easter for the borough. Hello, thanks for your company. We hope you enjoyed a lovely Easter weekend. It's good to see you. It is lovely to see you. Welcome back to the studio. Thank you very much. It is very good to be back. Well, our first story tonight isn't about Easter. We're starting with politics because the Prime Minister has been in our region today. The local election campaign is, of course, underway. We know that a general election won't be too far away. And so today, Rishi Sunak took the chance to promote a national childcare scheme on a visit to Teesside. We'll show you an extended interview with him in just a moment, but first, Chris Jackson reports. The Prime Minister back at nursery today promoting the government's free childcare policy, but it wasn't long before he was challenged by one partly full parent, sceptical of how free it actually is. Nurseries are struggling, and my answer to fear is that we'll lose another nursery in time because the system isn't doesn't feel, or the certain information is coming out, it doesn't feel like the system is got the foundations right. Working parents in England can now claim 15 hours free childcare a week for two-year-olds. This will be extended to babies aged nine months and over in September, and that will be increased to 30 hours a week a year later. But for nurseries like this one in North Shields, the sums don't add up. They're introducing a £1 an hour sustainability fee to survive. The government funding covers education. It doesn't cover things like the cost of food. It doesn't cover things like um, trips out, um, trips on the metro, going across the fish quay, and things like that. And you know, which is why we've introduced the sustainability fee. Because from a nursery point of view, if I've got 50 children all on funding, and we're underfunded massively by the government, I'm not going to be here this time next year. And that's just a simple fact of the matter. And that's the same with every single nursery in the area. Parents who use this nursery have mixed feelings over the government's policy. It does help, but I think what's going to have probably a negative effect is what's going to have on the nursery, trying to look after all the children, the ratio has changed, um, and then still affording healthy food for them. It is frustrating that we haven't been able to access the funded hours before now, but it also gives us hope that if we decide to have any further kids, that it will have a positive impact on us. According to the latest Ofsted figures, the North East has fewer childcare places per head for children aged four and under than anywhere else in England, and Labour says that's a problem. We've seen the last academic year alone over a thousand places lost in that time. Alongside it, there are really big regional variations too. Some parts of the North East and South West and Cumbria in particular, uh, there's an acute problem where we've ended up with childcare deserts and parents just can't access places. The government says it's confident in the strength of its childcare market and can cope with demand. Parents will hope they're right, don't endure a nasty fall in the sector. Chris Jepson, ITV News, North Shields. Well, our political correspondent, Tom Sheldrick, spoke to the Prime Minister in Hartlepool earlier about a different range of subjects. Uh, Rishi Sunak insisted the future for rail manufacturing, for example, is bright, despite concerns over jobs at the Hitachi factory in County Durham. He also defended the government's record in tackling regional inequalities. They started by discussing that childcare policy. 
Prime Minister, you're here to celebrate the extension of free childcare, but many nurseries are full or can't get more staff, so families can't get places. That's the reality, isn't it? No, I, I don't believe it is. And actually, when we introduced this policy or announced this policy a while back, people said, why can't you do it overnight straight away? And it was exactly because we wanted to take the time to make sure there were more staff in the sector, more places available, that we are doing it in stages. And I'm, I'm really pleased that we are, because it is going to make a huge difference to many working parents. We've backed it with billions of pounds of extra funding. It's total support that is worth around £7,000 for working families, so it's really significant, and it's a part of making sure that parents have that choice about how best to juggle childcare and their careers. Thank you, but figures for the end of last year show there are more than three children aged four and under per childcare place in the North East. Labour call it a childcare desert, are they right? Uh, no, actually, if you look at the stats, what we saw over the last year is more childcare places across the country and more people involved in providing childcare, more staff involved in the sector. Those, those, are, the, those are the two places. things that we wanted to make sure were increasing, and they are increasing because we've given this policy time and we've put extra investment in. You talk about uh, Labour, you know, what do we know? Labour haven't committed to this policy. They would actually take it away from working parents, which I don't think is the right thing to do. Jobs at Hitachi's factory in Newton Aycliffe are at risk, uh, as the government hasn't signed off on new train orders. Why is that, and will you act now? Uh, well, the, the, obviously I know this will be a worrying time for, for workers at Hitachi and in the supply chain, but the future for rail manufacturing is bright across the UK, and there are more orders to come, and actually at the moment there are tenders that are coming out, I believe, for, I think, Northern, Southeastern, Chiltern, Trans Pennine, so all of those well, are to come, get some more and it's obviously not uh, not possible for me to comment on individual commercial contracts, but what I can say is uh, officials from the Department for Transport are involved extensively in dialogue with Hitachi about the future of that plant, but more generally there are, I said, healthy orders for rail manufacturing in the UK. It's an important part of our economy. Now, the Labour leader, Keir Starmer, has said the government's key pledge to level up regions like ours was strangled at birth by you with a lack of funding. How do you respond to that? I mean, I, I'm out and about across Teesside today, and what have we got? We've got the free port that I was just at, which is now attracting billions of pounds of investment and thousands of jobs. We've got the Treasury campus that I set up in Darlington. If I could just finish, it's really important. We've got a new trail, railway station in Darlington, and we've got high streets and town centres across Teesside being invested in, whether that's Darlington, Hartlepool, where we are, Stockton, Redcar. So that is levelling up in action. Forgive me, promise, do we don't Oh. And actually, after years of neighbour neglect, people wherever I'm at and about across Teesside feel an enormous sense of optimism about the future as a result of those investments. But an analysis change. by The Guardian today shows healthy life expectancy, a key metric in the North East, is falling further behind the South East. Those promises aren't being fulfilled, are they? No, when it comes to future health, what, one thing that I've uh, brought forward is a plan to improve the health of our children. It's been really important to me that we tackle vaping and indeed smoking. Talk to any parent, I'm a parent or any teacher, they'll talk about the scourge of vaping. Actually, I was in Darlington at a school discussing this with parents and teachers there. And actually, we're bringing forward measures to ban disposable vapes, clamp down on advertising, promotion, marketing and flavours of vapes. A final question, Prime Minister. I know you won't tell me the general election date, but you've got the seasons on the board there behind you, the seasons of the year. Can you tell me which season it will be? In? Well, I've said, I've said consistently that, you know, I expect my working assumption is that we'll have a general election in the second half of the year. Nothing's changed from that. But the key is the choice of that election. Now, after a tough couple of years for the country with COVID and the war in Ukraine and energy bills, I really feel now that we have turned a corner. Inflation down from 11% to 3.4%, energy bills falling by hundreds of pounds, wages rising, and this year taxes being cut by £900 for the average worker, as well as the state pension going up by £900. So to be clear, are you shows, saying autumn that, or winter not showing? Sure. That shows that the plan is working, and if we stick to that plan, I can deliver the peace of mind that there's a brighter future ahead. General election in the autumn or winter, not the summer? Is that I admit, I, I, I'll repeat what I just said. Uh, my working assumption is that we'll be election in the second half of the year, and nothing has changed from that. Thank you, Prime Minister. Tom Sheldrick speaking to Rishi Sunak there. Tom's with us now. Tom, uh, what stood out for you today? Ian, childcare is a huge issue where both main parties think they can get on the front foot. It is a big offer from the government, though with big question marks alongside it and a bit of an awkward moment for Rishi Sunak with that uh, mum earlier on. On the other hand, we heard him claim there that Labour would take away what's now being rolled out if they get into power. 
Labour insists that's not correct, that they are reviewing the policy. And then, of course, the general election looms large. The Prime Minister can set the date and try to maximise what look like slim hopes of him holding on uh, to power. I think he left the door open there to holding it in July before the political summer break, though the autumn is still more likely. What we do know is that important local elections are exactly a month away, and we'll have plenty of coverage over the next few weeks. Tom, thank you very much indeed. Now, Chester the Street Town Centre was shut for several hours this afternoon after a suspected stolen motorbike crashed after being pursued by police. It happened on Front Street just after 10.30 this morning. The motorcyclist was taken to the RVI with serious leg injuries. He was arrested and released while he received treatment. A 12-year-old boy was also treated after being hit by debris. The road and footpaths were closed for several hours but have since reopened. Two people have been questioned by police in connection with an alleged stabbing in Middlesbrough. Officers were called to Birchington Avenue in the Grangetown area on Sunday. A man remains in a critical but stable condition in hospital. A 20-year-old woman and a 21-year-old man have been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Major restoration work has started on the Tyne Bridge. It began this morning and will take around four years to complete in time for the bridge's centenary in 2028. The Grade 2 listed landmark remains open, but lane restrictions are in place. The drivers are being advised to plan ahead and to expect delays. Staff at the Arriva bus depots in Blythe and Ashington have suspended planned strike action after a potential pay deal was reached. The company says Unite the Union have agreed to take a new revised pay offer to their members and have called off industrial action between the 7th and the 13th of April. You're watching ITV News Time Tees, still to come on tonight's programme. Short of players, Newcastle's injury and suspension woes continue. Simon will be with us later as they prepare to take on Everton. And some bright spells managed to break through today, but lots of clouds around, patchy rain, and there's further rain moving up from the south. What does that mean for us, though? I've got your forecast later. Well, next tonight, as the Prime Minister mentioned earlier in the programme, the government say that they want to try and discourage young people from taking up vaping and are considering a new tax. A consultation is now underway. If it does go ahead, the e-liquids in vapes would be taxed and at a higher rate for products with more nicotine in them. The vaping industry says it would be a tax on smokers who have now made healthier choices in their lives. In the North East, the number of smokers has fallen in recent years. The latest figures, though, show well over one in ten adults here still smoke tobacco. Kevin Ashford reports. Don't pick a cigarette up. Or if you have got root puck in there. Warning others of the dangers of smoking. Claire Oldfield from Whitney Bay was diagnosed with lung cancer after smoking for 35 years. She gave up the habit with the help of vapes. It wasn't difficult at all when I first tried it. It just, I don't know, it just seemed to suit me. It, there was no cravings anymore. Got it all finished. Um, the smoking... As a result of using the veil, I can actually smell smoke really strong now. And actually now smells absolutely disgusting to me. I don't even know how I ever actually did it. However, vaping is set to become more expensive after the government announced plans for a tax on vaping products. Because it says vaping is not risk-free, with concerns over future harm and addiction, particularly among the young. The vaping industry body opposes the move describing the levy as a tax on smokers who've made healthier choices in their lives. And Claire has concerns too. People may revert back to smoking. Um, obviously the views is at the present moment that these things are cheaper. And obviously if the tax goes on, I would just be worried that people like myself go back to the smoking. The government says the levy would go towards helping support smokers who want to give up. This clinic uses vapes to help smokers off tobacco, targeting in particular groups such as those on low incomes or with mental health issues. They would have very high you know, rates of smoking, 
they find the vape quite effective, particularly working late at night, um, you know, and they're saving money. They're not spending so much money on cigarettes. They've got a free vape kit from the service and they're using that and they see an advisor every week. And this is all part of our, you know, tailored programme. The charity Action on Smoking and Health says it supports a vape tax and would also like to see minimum pricing for e-cigarettes. Currently, you can buy products online for, well, as little as two quid, uh, many of them under five quid, and you can buy them in shops for 5 99 These are pocket money prices, and they don't include the cost of recycling. And we need to see these products recycled, and we need the price to, to, to be sufficient to discourage children. The government told ITV that tobacco duty would be increased at the same time as the introduction of a vape tax to keep the incentive to choose vaping over smoking. If a vape tax is introduced, it will come into effect in 2026. Kevin Ashford, ITV News. And the ITV Evening News continues at 6.30 tonight with Charlie. Coming up on ITV Evening News, the world demands answers as British nationals are among seven foreign aid workers killed in an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. What the government's new free childcare scheme means for parents and families. We speak to one of the last drivers to cross the Baltimore Bridge before its deadly collapse. And the groundbreaking technology that could help tens of thousands of people with type 1 diabetes. Join us for stories and much more from 6.30. Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. There's a full Easter weekend of sport to reflect on, but it's Newcastle United versus Everton in the Premier League tonight. As Simon is at St James's Park for us, um, there's still plenty for the Magpies to play for, well, in a way this season, Simon, but they're almost running out of players to fight with. Yeah, they are. More injuries, more suspensions. It's been the story of the season, really, hasn't it? Eddie Howard's had to do without so many of his key players for such a long time due to so many injuries, often serious ones as well. Club captain Jamal Lascelles was one of the latest ones. He went down with a serious injury on Saturday. There were bumps and bruises to a few others. And then Andy Gordon got sent off, so of course he misses tonight's game against his former club Everton as well. But Newcastle can't and won't feel sorry for themselves. Saturday's win over West Ham saw the Magpies climb back up to 8th place. They are right in the mix to qualify for Europe next season. Uh, Newcastle defender Fabian Scher says they won't let all the injuries and suspensions knock them off course. I don't want us to step, step up um, a bit more than, than maybe before. Like Even young players, just performance and, 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 and how you act in, in the dressing room around and, and stuff like this. So everyone has to step up and um, I try to do the same. Well, Everton have got their own problems, of course. They're in a relegation battle, and they haven't actually won a league game since before Christmas. So, never mind the injuries, never mind the suspensions. Newcastle should win this match tonight. In the Football League, it's been a good Easter for Middlesbrough and Harrogate. It started well for Sunderland. It ended very, very badly. Maybe the story of Middlesbrough's season will ultimately be a tale of too little, too late. But Michael Carrick's team aren't giving up without a fight. They got a good point away at Southampton on Good Friday, and they backed that up with a routine home win over struggling Sheffield Wednesday on Easter Monday. It was 2-0, it could have been more, but it was very comfortable, and Borough could even afford to miss a penalty. Sam Greenwood's the guilty party. So as it stands, Middlesbrough are ninth in the Championship, six points off the playoffs, with six games to go. There's an element of when you get to the stage of the season, you've got to embrace it as well. And um, yeah, of course, we can only do what we can do for our results. But you've still got to, you've still got to, um, when it gets to this stage, understand what what you're playing for as well. And uh, the boys graphed that really well today. The season can't end quick enough for Sunderland. Friday's win at Cardiff did at least raise the spirits. That small step forward was followed by a giant leap back, though. The performance at home to a relegation-threatened Blackburn Rovers was pathetic. A real horror show. They found themselves two down at half-time, but instead of fighting back, Sunderland just let go of the rope, and things went from bad to worse to even worse still. Sunderland won, Blackburn Rovers five. It was horrible. 
and the only positive thing he could say was that the man in charge didn't attempt to dress it up. That's completely unacceptable. I don't say that lightly when I say that. You know, that's probably the best word I can find at the moment. Um, someone said, you know, is it a game to forget? It's not a game to forget. It's a game that we've got to use to demonstrate to this to this young group that one week you think you've cracked it, and then you get a complete humbling 48 hours later. Harrogate Town were a goal down at home to Chillingham at half time, but by the end they were 5 1 up. There were some pretty good goals in there as well. Harrogate are four points off the playoff places in League Two and hope springs eternal in North Yorkshire. The Everton team bus has just pulled in here at St James's Park ahead of tonight's game against Newcastle United in the Premier League. Finally from me though, Cricket's County Championship starts on Friday and there could be an unexpected bonus for Durham fans. England's Test match captain and all-round superstar Ben Stokes has said he's keen to play for Durham in the early part of the season. He usually doesn't get the chance. He's decided he won't play for England in the T20 World Cup this summer. He's going to focus on his fitness. Loads of sport to enjoy over the long Easter weekend, and great to have a few days off to be able to, you know, indulge. Watch someone, it. What should be noticed? Someone, someone had a few more days off than others. <laughs> yeah, a few. It was a little bit longer than a long weekend, wasn't it? It's, it's lovely to be back alongside you both in the studio, though. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. we should say it's lovely. <laughs> some lovely messages from viewers. Thank you very much indeed to those of you who've been in touch. I've seen some of you out and about as well. A uh, lovely long walk, actually, over the long weekend. Sunday was glorious, wasn't it? Yeah, it was and, then, yeah. and then another long walk that was planned for Monday. Absolutely yeah. washed Ditch out. Yeah, yeah, we had a, great, a good bank holiday weekend yeah. all in all. Actually, our part of the world saw some of the most sunshine on offer in the UK. Good Friday, Saturday, Easter mm -hmm. Sunday, then yeah, Monday. Monday. Yeah, not, not, not so amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it started April off as March pretty much carried on. We've got the stats for March now. No massive surprise when it comes to temperatures. We're very used to this now. It was milder than average. And then here's where the best surprise actually was wetter than average for many of us as well. And as a result of that, it was duller too. We actually struggled with the sunshine, even that late burst over the Easter weekend. On these maps, white is average. The grey there showing where it's duller than average. The blue wetter than average. So you can see it was... A mixed month for us today, not so impressive either, thanks to Richard Dixon for sending this photo in. We were talking about bright spells earlier. Yeah, that looks black and white. That's it wasn't. It. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> but here's the plus side. Look behind us. It's still light. Yes. Over the Love weekend, the, light the, the clocks have sprung forward, and we're feeling yeah. the benefit of that, yeah. even if the weather's not behaving exactly. Let's take a look at the forecast. Some bright breaks around as we end the day, but of course today that cloud's never been too far away. And with the clouds, we have seen some patchy rain, a few showers and further rainfall on the cards as we make our way overnight. With that, of course, plenty of cloud lasting through much of tomorrow. And it does set the mood through the next few days. Very useless at the moment. It is staying unsettled, low pressure consistently nearby. So that's tonight's feature into tomorrow. The low pressure still lingering. It does clear away into Thursday. We'll see some brighter skies, a scattering of showers. Friday, further rain moving its way in from the southwest. And a squeeze on the isobars as well, turning blustery at times. Compared to that, then, relatively calm through this evening. Lighter breezes, but the cloud again is thickening. And we're starting to see that rain arriving from the south as we make our way overnight. Occasionally, it will start to pep up the brighter colours, showing the risk of those heavier downpours. Temperature-wise, holding up around 6 or 7 degrees thanks to that cloud cover. So it's not too chilly going into tomorrow morning, but not a great start of the day. Again, lots of cloud, sometimes heavy spells of rain. Now, the rain gradually is clearing its way further north, and behind that, as we saw today, sometimes that cloud will thin and break. We'll see some brighter skies, but also a fair few showers developing. Underneath any brighter skies, highs of a mild 12, 13 degrees. Where we hold on to the cloud cover, though, it is going to feel quite a bit fresher than that. Through the next part of Wednesday and into Thursday, this feature here continues to push its way up towards the north. Overnight, again, the cloud will thicken, but any rain tends to peter out. So Thursday itself, there's more in the way of sunshine, a scattering of showers, and towards the end of the week, those temperatures will start to climb as well. Tui sponsors ITV, Tainty's Weather.
Nikki Ross, in just a moment, it's the national and international news. I'll be back here tonight with the update for you at half past ten. I hope to see you then. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.